Hello again, everybody. It's Andrew, still here at Battleground in the Abington in the Loft. And I'm going to do a little bit more miniature painting. So, yeah, let's get back to it. So, if you joined me yesterday, you'll recall that I was painting uh, some miniatures for the competition that's going to be going on. Um, for Battleground, all three Battleground locations are doing a miniature painting competition. And I wanted to see what I could come up with. Um, it didn't go quite as planned yesterday. Uh, if you joined me, you saw me trying to build a base to put my miniatures on. And I've got the pieces of the base here. I decided to go with a three layer base with sort of steps. I built it out of cardboard uh, and I was going to skin it in green stuff and stamp it with a texture. Well, uh, I've never worked with green stuff in my life before yesterday and I had not anticipated quite how sticky and difficult to work with it actually is. So that was a challenge. Um, what I ended up doing is, well, why am I not able to do this? Um, I, I abandoned that for the time being. I'll go back to it. I think that I just need to skin either in something other than green stuff, just get like modeling clay, uh, or skin in, mo I, if you watched what I did was I just mashed up a whole ton of green stuff uh, and tried to m slap it on there. I think I just was, I took too much and it was, it was just too much. I also need to um, grease the stamp, I think, because green stuff is exceptionally sticky. And when I was using it, it was sticking to the stamp more than it was sticking to um, more than it was sticking to the base. So that was that was disappointing, but that's okay. I did get my miniatures prepped, if you recall. I have a little bard that I'm painting. I have a little treasure chest. And I have three kobolds that I'm going to be painting. Uh, after I ended the stream yesterday, I uh, went out back and I zapped all of these with some primer. And I was concerned because I have heard that sometimes the uh, plastic that these guys are molded out of can react with primers and um, sometimes it can actually like melt the plastic and sometimes it doesn't stick to the plastic. But the primer I was using seems to have worked. They've come out pretty well. I can still see a lot of the texture and detail that I'm looking forward to painting. Uh, yeah, they came out pretty well, I think. Now, the next issue that I am going to have is I cannot actually stand these guys up. If you watched yesterday, I snipped their stands off. So they, they don't stand up on their own anymore, which is fine. I anticipated that. That was sort of the intent. Um, because I'm going to be sticking them to this base. But before I can paint them, I need a way to stand them up after they've been painted so they don't fall down uh, on the paint and ruin it. So here's my plan. I borrowed from my wife some straight pins. And these guys are exceptionally fine pins. I was intending initially to use a drill and drill out the feet to fit the pin in and just pin them to the base. <clears throat> but the drill bit that I have, this is the smallest drill bit I have, it's significantly larger than the straight pins themselves. Which is okay. Um, I don't know if you can see that there. Here's the drill, it's big and thick. And here's the pin, it's tiny and narrow. So I think I'm not going to use the drill. I'll just take that apart and put it away. 
which is fine. Keep that drill for when I actually do need to use it to... I'm going to be using it at some point. One of my projects that I want to do is to magnetize the bases of my Rune Wars figs, and I'm going to use the drill for that. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just going to put the drill away, and I'm going to get... Uh, some snippers out. And I'm going to snip off the ends of these pins. And I actually, I should do it the other way. I should stick the pin into the figure. And then I should snip off the end. And then I'll have, you know, a pin sticking out of the foot. And I can use that to stand them up. Uh, so I'm going to take my glasses off so I can do this near to my face. Uh, hopefully, oops, my experience from yesterday is that this plastic is fairly malleable. Um, so I should be able to just push the pin right into the plastic. You know, try and get, I don't know, maybe a centimeter of the pin in. And then I'll snip off some of the base of it. There you go. Don't want to push the pin so far that it comes out because these guys have irregular feet, especially the kobolds, because they are digitigrade. They're, they've got long paws. So, okay. That pin is in there. And then I'll just snip off the end of it. There we go. Can I just use the same pin or do I need to have one that has a, a sharp end? I think I can use the same one. Maybe use a drilling motion. Try and get it in there. I should wear eye protection for this. At least the uh, the end of this that's coming off isn't the end with the pointy bit, so it's not going to stab me in the eye, hopefully. Okay. You know what I should do? I should hold the end of it like this. So I snip it off. It's just the... There we go. Oh, that worked perfectly. Oh, I'm learning already. All right, so uh, I forced that pin in too far. There. I'm going to have to paint over that, but you can see the pin came out of his foot there. Uh, hmm. Maybe I can pull this out a bit. Pull it out just a tad. Okay, this is this is dangerous. I want to. Well, I'm just going to leave that like that. So now, I can stick him into the cardboard like this. There, and he stands up. He doesn't fall over. Excellent. So let's repeat that with my other two. Now, I'm trying to find like a way to get the pin in there, uh, just sort of drill it in, make sure it's not popping out anywhere, there we go. It was very nice of my wife to allow me to steal some of her pins for this project. And these pins are perfect for this. There we go. And one more. I've gotten four guys with this one pin 
or four feet with this one pin, so two pins is all I need. Do it. Ah, I punched that right through him. That's fine. Everything's fine. Just pull it back a little bit. Come on. There we go. Okay, I'm going to put this in the trash. There we go. So this is, you can see the pins sticking out of his feet there. Hopefully you can see that on camera. So now he's got these pins sticking out of his feet, which allows me to stick him to the cardboard. Yeah, there we go. And then they just stick to the cardboard. So when I build the full set, as long as I stick them in while it is still wet, they'll stay where I stick them. That's awesome. And of course, it fits what I was trying to do today, my primary goal, which is to, um, is to be able to stand them up while I paint them. Ah, I lost a kobold. The kobold is down. He's back. Okay. Just have to do the other kobold and then do the bard. I'm not going to bother with the treasure chest because obviously it's very stable. Hold the pin and light the lamp, not the rat. There we go. One more. This guy doesn't have much depth for me to put this pin into, but try and get enough in there that it's not going to just slide right out. It's just held in by friction, obviously. I'm not gluing these in or anything. But... The combination of friction and gravity will hold them in place. There we go. There's him. Come on. Punch him into there. There we go. And the bard. She's got very dainty feet, so I'll have to be careful. I'm gonna punch it into her heels so it goes up her legs. She's also a slightly stronger plastic, but that's, that's fine. Still going in. Nope. Yeah. Getting too far. That's. I don't want to punch through. Oops, I'm doing this wrong again. Here we go. Come on, snip. Here we go. Flop. All right, it's her. One more.
That's good. There we go. Get rid of this. That's garbage. Done with these. So I'll bring the rest of these back home. Done with these. Has worked pretty well for that. I was concerned that those snippers wouldn't be sufficient to the task of cutting into those pins, but worked out pretty well actually. All right. So I'm done with the construction phase for now, and now I can concentrate on doing some painting. So I've got a bunch of paints that I've grabbed. Um, I also grabbed some reference for the kobolds. Got my water, got my paint brushes. Then I can start doing some painting. I'll start with the kobolds just because I've got spares so if I really mess them up it's not the end of the world so here's my reference I grabbed my monster manual and I have this fantastic illustration that I can use for reference and it's got a lot of cool detail in this that I don't know if I'll be able to get into these tiny models. I like the sort of uh, lines on the tail here. It's got like specks on the shoulders. I'm not going for that level of detail, I think, with these models. Hmm. That pin is not working. I'll pluck that out. Hmm. Hang on. The, one of the pins I put into the bard has gone through her boot and is coming out of her ankle. And it doesn't look very good. So I'm going to try and move that. I think I need one more pin, and I'll just try and put it in a different place. I do have the chat up if anybody wants to hop into chat and talk to me while I'm doing construction and painting and stuff. I welcome your input. You can tell me how I'm doing all of this wrong, which I you know, I'm feeling my way through things. I'm not obviously an expert modeler or painter. Yeah, you can see I pushed some plastic out of her ankle where the thing went through. That's okay. There we go. Fix that. There we go. There. Yeah. I'll hold her up. She's going to have a bit more of a base, too, when I get her base done. Anyways, I'm going to start with this treasure chest because 
I don't have the gold color for it, but I do have a good wooden brown. And a lot of this treasure chest is brown. Or it's going to be. Uh, so I'll just grab it brown. And this will be a good sort of start me out thing. brush. No, not that brush. Use this brush. And finally, I get to start applying paint to my models. I'm just going to, for the base coat, I'll get all of this brown here. For such a small chest, it does have a fair amount of cool detail on it, so hopefully that will come across through all the paint. I will highlight the fact that these are only the second set of things that I've painted. Uh, for my Rune Warriors, or Rune Wars, I've painted a, a number of skeletons, which you've seen before if you've watched any of the stuff that I've streamed. Uh, but I am not a super experienced painter. I am still very, very much a novice, so trying to push my push myself to expand my abilities. That's why I'm enjoying doing things like adding the pins, chopping the bases off. That's the first like actual modding I've done. Like changing a model in any way. This entire project is about learning new techniques. And there's a lot of new techniques to learn, definitely. Um, one of the things I'm going to have to get to tonight is I'm going to have to start doing flesh tones, not on the kobolds, of course, but on the bard. She is going to have the first flesh tones I've ever had to deal with. So I've never worked with that because I've been painting skeletons and skeletons don't have flesh, <laughs> sort of by definition. So that's going to be a new experience. I don't know if I have a good color for the bands and latches on this chest. You can see that it's got a lot of uh, bits on it besides just brown wood. And I don't know what color I'll do for that. One advantage to doing uh, a bunch of small figures like this instead of one 
enormous figure or an army of figures uh, is that I can mix paints and I don't have to worry about consistency between. So I, I could do some paint mixing to get good detail. You know what, I could use the copper tone, the sort of red copper tone that I used on the edges of the shields for my undead army on this chest. One thing I really love about this stage of painting, about doing this base coat, this is just sort of blocking out colors and finding what works. Um, and in this process, you discover a lot about the model itself. So, although all I'm doing is putting a base coat on here, in the process of putting the base coat on, I discover all these details that are sculpted into it, all these bits in the mold that aren't obvious until you start looking at it at this scale, bring it right up to your face and applying a fine brush in there. And then I have to decide how to highlight those details best to bring them out when I paint them. I would love it if anybody who's watching would hop in chat and just say hi. Just so I know that I'm not completely alone. I'm actually pretty used to being completely alone on my streams. I stream on uh, YouTube periodically, not as often as once I did. Um, and very often I have nobody in chat, so I'm kind of used to that. But it would be cool to have somebody to talk to. This is so relaxing. And all the cares of the world just sort of fade away when you're doing this detail work. Because you're just in there, it's just you and the model and the paint and all of you out there in the internet watching me doing this painting. I do like this model. It's nice. I'm glad I started with this chest because this is a good warm up. It's very simple. Lots of big flat areas, even if they are textured wood. But it's a good way to get into the mood. Okay, I think uh, that's all the brown. <laughs> So, actually, a tiny, tiny bit more brown. One of the things that I have noticed, which I don't know if you'll be able to see here, but on the base here, sticking out right there, there's a the uh, haft of a sword that's buried in the, the treasure hall there. So, I'm going to... I'm going to paint the, paint a part of that brown. 
Yeah, so I can see there's, there's a lot of coins in this treasure. But there's this sword sticking out here, and I guess that's the other end of it over here. Looks like it's in a scabbard. Which I guess makes sense if you're going to stick something in. So I need to think of a color for the scabbard. And there's something that looks like an amulet right here. So I can do something fun with that. And over on this side, I don't know what this is. It looks like uh, maybe a bag, a purse. There's something sculpted in there, and I'm going to have to decide what it is so that I can paint it. And there's um, a lamp here, like Aladdin's lamp. So I'm going to paint what would be the leather portion of this sword in brown. And I'll do the scabbard in a lighter brown, I guess. metallic or the crossbar on the sword and the pommel This is kind of fine detail work. There we go. And then the pommel here. Man, is it already 8.30? Where does the time go? I played some Magic League de uh, games earlier, and I think that ate up a lot of time. I guess that's one thing about painting that I'm still adjusting to is how much time just vanishes while I'm doing it. I don't feel like a lot of time goes by, but ah, uh, it just I look up and 10 hours have passed. Well, not literally. But I had budgeted myself like four hours for painting today, and now I have to go in half an hour. Uh, looking for. Here we are. Here's a different brown to use for the scabbard of this sword that's sticking out of the treasure hall. Yeah, didn't shake it enough. There is no way I have time between now and the 30th to complete this entire painting project. 
So at this stage, I, I have to accept that I'm just doing this for fun. I'm not doing it for the painting competition. It's just not time to get it done. It's a very watery brown. It's going to take several layers to get anything out of that, but at least I can get an idea of where this color is going to go. Hmm. There we go. Yeesh! Yeah, paint everywhere! Use some of the techniques that Amanda has taught me. My wife has done more painting than I have, and she's taught me how you can sort of wick some of the paint away if you dry your brush and get in there quickly enough. There we go. This I think I just did not shake this up enough. I'm just getting water with a little brown in it. if I get more pigment here. That's a little better. Okay. Uh, I'll do the, the lamp and the copper color. Man, I haven't even gotten to the bard. Oh my goodness. So much work to be done. I'm gonna have to come in early tomorrow and do some painting before the store opens. See, my dilemma with this treasure hoard is I don't want everything to just be gold. Things have to stand out in it. So I'm trying to get some contrast in here. Some copper. Some browns. All right, well, that's a start on this treasure hall. I'm guessing this is an amulet here. I can make that looks like a gem over there. I'll do one with like a uh, a ruby look and one with a maybe an emerald look. 
and then there's going to be a lot of gold and then I need some color for for the bends and edges of this chest Making some progress on that. I'm going to do a little work on the bard and then call it a night because I really do have to go home by way of the stop and shop. So and it would be nice to see Amanda at some point today. I guess I'll start getting some flesh color in on her. Uh, so the flesh color that I've chosen is a sort of rose brown, it says. So not a bright pink. I'll probably end up doing a, a reddish wash to bring it out. Maybe uh, brush her cheeks with a, a rose or a, a red, bring them out. I haven't painted any humans yet, just skeletons, so I don't have a lot of techniques for face painting in this faces. Bitty, bitty. I'd like to think that a basic knowledge of <coughs> makeup would be helpful in painting the faces of minis, because some of the same techniques are going to come into play, uh, highlighting and stuff like that. but. I don't have even a basic knowledge of makeup, so even if that is so that a basic knowledge of makeup is helpful in painting, it's not going to help me a great deal. Some flesh color applied to her face. I'm going to get her hands. I was thinking about her hands on the drive over here this afternoon. Uh, she has very pointy fingers, like claws. And I was like, oh, that's kind of gruesome. Um, but then I realized, oh, you know what? If I, oh gracious, this is awful. Um, if, if I paint her fingernails a different color, like if I give her ruby red fingernails, that will eliminate the, the sort of downside of having these Claws. Uh oh. I can hear that the sound is going out. Give me a couple of sacks here. I can fix that. Might actually be my cue to go, but I can fix it. Give me a sec.
You know, I see Pat Patrick has joined us in the chat. Hi, Patrick. What I am painting is a diorama for the uh, for the painting, the mini painting and modeling competition that Battleground is doing. Uh, and my diorama involves a bard and a trio of kobolds and a treasure chest. So that's the, the treasure chest there. And then I'm starting work on the bard. So if I'm going to have this done by the uh, If I want to have this done by the 30th, which is not super likely at this stage, like I've said, I'm, I'm becoming resolved to the fact that I'm not going to get this done in time for the competition deadline. But if I, if I do want to reach that deadline, I need to budget my time. Um, because I want to get all the painting completed by Saturday. That means I need to have the base coat done by end of day, ideally end of day Wednesday, so I can do washes on Thursday and then fine detail on Friday and Saturday. So I really need to get paint applied to all these models today and tomorrow. Man, she really does have incredibly pointy fingers. I have to assume that that means she's got like Lee Press-On nails, like huge, long, vicious claw-like nails, which I'm not a fan of in real life, but you do what you've got in the model. Yeah, it definitely does take a lot of patience painting minis, Patrick. Um, I guess because I find it so relaxing and sort of, it, it's almost meditation for me when I'm painting the minis. I, I haven't painted minis before uh, Rune Wars came out. The Rune Wars figures were the first ones that I painted. So it's not like I speak from a position of great experience. But from the little experience I have had, it is very relaxing. fleshy colored blobs where her hands are. Definitely when you're applying paint to a model, uh, it's sort of depending on the paint you're using, but it can look sort of blobbish. Uh, and a lot of that goes away when the paint dries 
initially it looks a lot worse. But as it dries, it contracts down into the cracks and brings out some of the detail. Okay, so I can see on this model a few details that I want to bring out. She's got a, a dagger on her side here. She's got a pouch on her other side here. Belt, I'll definitely bring, bring that out. Uh, like I said yesterday when I was looking at her initially, I realized that she's got what looks like it could be painted as a bare midriff but I'm gonna do that as a skin tight undergarment. I did not grab a good yellow to use for her hair. I'm gonna make her blonde. I didn't grab a good yellow for that. Uh, and then she's got what looks like, I don't know, maybe ribbons here and here. Uh, on the tops of her arms, she's got these sort of puffy sleeves. I'm going to do her outfit in whites and blues. Uh, and browns on the bottom. So whites and blues on the top and her trousers in browns and her boots in browns. Looks like she's got a single sort of knee pad. That's odd. Maybe I'll do her trousers in blue so that, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to do her sleeves and her midriff in white. Five minutes of nine. Good gracious. <laughs> well, Patrick, if you ever want to spend some time painting Come in on a, I guess, Wednesday afternoons sometimes I'm doing some painting between when I finish shipping stuff and when D&D um, &D starts. And sometimes we have painting on Monday afternoons. It's like painting socials. I really don't know what this is on her shoulders. She might have like, ribbons, or is that supposed to be hair? I guess that's supposed to be hair hanging down over her outfit there. These are the decisions you make while you're painting. Patrick, I'm sure you are aware, uh, because I know you listen to the podcast, but Amanda has spent a lot of time painting. Uh, she's pin painted a whole bunch of um, figures, most recently the ones for uh, most recently the ones for the Labyrinth board game.
She's also painted a number of the figures for the Talisman board game, which sadly is out of print now, as it was part of the Fantasy Flight Games Workshop thing that sort of fell apart this year. I'm seeing some sort of blobs here that I don't know if they're in the sculpt or if they're a result of a reaction between the model plastic and the primer. Uh, she's got a thumb on the back side of this. I have to get to. Oh, I wish I had more time. Time is not a commodity I have much of. Just what with running the podcast and doing all these streams. have much time for painting. I trimmed away a lot of excess material yesterday, but there's still some in the crook of her elbow here. That's all right. Let's paint over it. Nobody will ever know. Uh, Patrick, it looks like Labyrinth is pretty solidly the next game that we're going to be playing on stream. So on Friday, we'll be playing Labyrinth. Uh, we still need to round up some more players. But the poll that I put up um, was... Last time I looked, Labyrinth was leading the poll like 2-1. to one. So that will probably be happening on uh, Friday. With, yes, of course, Amanda's painted figures. Okay. Oh, no. Getting paint on one of the last ever Battleground branded mats. I want to get uh, a little more flesh tone because I noticed while I was painting underneath the flute here on the back side, I can see her thumb and the and the ball of her faint hand there. Okay. Oh, 
All right. So I've got my work cut out for me with this project. I'm making a little progress. I got some work done on the treasure chest. I started work on the bard. I haven't touched any of the kobolds yet. So they're going to be next on the docket. Oh, darn it. All right, but in the meantime, I really do have to head home for the night. It's late, and I don't know where all the time goes. All right, Patrick, thanks for joining me. Thanks, anybody else who joined me. Have a pleasant evening, everybody. And I probably will not stream my next painting, but next time when I bring these figures out, they'll have more paint applied to them and uh, hopefully make some progress in the next couple of days. You all have a wonderful night, evening, and uh, I look forward to seeing some folks online during the rest of the week. Bye, everyone.